Okay, what we're going to do now is just talk about one little area for about 10, 15 minutes or so, then we're going to have a break. We'll have a good break and then we'll come back and tackle the really important things uh, after the break. What I'm going to talk about now for about 10 minutes before we have a break is the indicator builder. What the indicator builder allows you to do is to build your own indicators, create your in own indicators. Now Metastock comes with hundreds of indicators already packaged in there, um, a lot of commonly used indicators and the like. This particular function within Metastock allows you to build your own indicators. A very common example is the COPOC indicator, C-O-P-P-O-C-H. COPOC indicator, which is a long-term cycles trend sort of uh, indicator. Been around for a while, Metastock doesn't have it. The formula is quite simple, therefore using the indicator builder you can go in and program up the COPOC indicator and it becomes available just like any other indicator. You may read a magazine, read an article somewhere, it talks about a particular approach. Using the indicator builder you can set that up. Now when you build your indicator, um, you can see that you're able to use it in other tools. So when you set up your own indicator called a custom indicator, you can use that indicator within an exploration, you can use it within a system tester, you can use it within an expert advisor. One of the things I do when I do some programming for people and myself is if I'm setting up a particular condition, or say five conditions in a row, I'll actually put that in an indicator. It'll be just one indicator. I'm then able to use those set of conditions within an explorer, system tester, expert advisor. The benefit being that should I want to change one of those conditions, say the volume figure I want to change from 50,000 to 100,000, rather than me going to all the other tools that I need to change it in, I go back to the one indicator and make that change. All the changes then flow on to all the other places where that's being used. And I think that's just a handy little way of using indicators. I always put my conditions within indicators, so I can use them in a number of different tools quite easily. Indicators are set up to do one of two things. Indicators will either return a value to you, it'll do some calculation and provide an answer, a value, or it will determine whether a condition is true or not. That's all an indicator will do. Return a value or say something whether something is true or not. If it is doing the latter, therefore identifying whether a condition is true or not, it will actually return a value, one of two values. Those values are either zero or one. If that condition is true, the indicator's value is zero. If it's uh, wrong, if it's true, it returns a value of one. If it's false, it returns a value of zero. Okay, or it will do some calculation and provide an answer for you. A moving average, as an indicator, will return a value to you. But if we were to say the closing price is greater than a moving average, that's an indicator that is either going to be true or not true, therefore one or zero. Okay, let's see this in use within Metastock. Now the indicator builder is available from the toolbar across the top, it's the FX button, or we can go to the tools menu and also identify the indicator builder within there. Once we open up the indicator builder, you'll already have quite a number of pre-programmed, already in there, uh, indicators from Metastock. A number of uh, buttons are available to us on the right hand side. We're going to click on new to create a new indicator. There's only two areas we need to type something in here and that is the name of the indicator and the actual formula itself. So David in this particular case has called his indicator Metastock Seminar. He's then going to type in a condition or some formula. And what we might do is some moving average uh, yeah, comparison. So what David's doing here is the C is greater than MOV open brackets and we'll say just do a 30 period moving average. So he's going to type in the moving average function as we've gone through and we'll just do a simple. There's our indicator and he's going to press OK. Metastock's happy with the formula and it accepts it. Now if David actually goes back in and edits that uh, formula and just say he makes a mistake. Let's say he swaps around the 30 and the S or he puts in SV or something that Metastock won't accept. So he puts in SV, we press OK, Metastock's going to say, hang on a second, I don't understand this formula. And this to me is a real powerful, quite a useful tool within Metastock. If you type in something that Metastock cannot work with, does not understand, it does not allow you to go any further. It will actually provide you the nature of the problem. And in this particular case, it's saying, look, I'm expecting a type of moving average here, and the one you put in, I don't understand. Furthermore, when we acknowledge that message by pressing OK, the cursor will be flashing exactly where the problem is. So if you've got 10 lines of coding and thinking, where was it talking about that extra bracket? 
Where the heavens is he talking about? No, no, no. The cursor will be flashing exactly where the problem is. Just something to bear in mind, which I think is quite useful. So David will fix up the formula there, press OK, and now it's happy with that formula.